Okay, welcome back. We are cooking again with our Ninja Foodie Oven, trying something new. And frankly, it's something that I have been asked from the very start, from the first video I ever made, can the thing cook baked potatoes? Well, not only are we gonna make baked potatoes in this video, we are also going to sear a New York strip steak and have ourselves some steak and baked potato for dinner tonight. So stick around and watch how we make these. Thank you for being here, let's get going. When I made the first Ninja Foodie review video for the 8 and one one of the questions that I got asked so often was, can it bake a potato? And I honestly didn't try one because I just felt it was too shallow that the top of the potato would be dried out and roasted too much. This one's an inch deeper, and so I certainly feel it can, and I'm going to go ahead and make one for you now. Right, our potato is prepared. It is oiled generously, punctured, pierced coated in kosher salt and some cracked black pepper. Let's go ahead and get this started. All right, I would recommend you just place it on the wire rack, but put the wire rack on the bottom glide so that there's plenty of room around the top. And, um, and so that should be fine. Now there's a lot of debate on temperature and how long to cook a baked potato. You do what you think works for you. I'm going to select bake for a temperature of 425 for a time of one hour. And I'm going to rotate it um, a couple times because the oven is small. Um, I want to make sure that it cooks evenly. So I'm going to about every 20 minutes, I'm going to turn it and flip it. Uh, just so that it has an even bake. And let's go ahead and start. While our potato is in the oven, I'm going to prepare our steak. We rarely cook or eat beef, and so I'm doing this for the video. I imagine, though, it's going to be pretty good, so we're going to give this a try. We're going to prepare it by drying it, um, making sure, because when you sear meat, you don't want to have any moisture to steam it. You want to make sure it's a dry surface that we're going to coat with some kosher salt and pepper. And we're going to put this on the oven with the, with the thermometer probe stuck into the side uh, in deeply into the, the meat and cook it to our desired temperature. So let me get it all prepared. And when the potatoes are out, we'll pop this in so that you can see how it will cook. Okay, it's almost done. Just 10 seconds more. I'm gonna take them out and I'm gonna set them on top here so that when I cook the steak, uh, the heat from this will keep them warm and, um, and then they'll just rest a little bit. That'll be good. Oh, they look wonderful. Yeah, crispy. Skin, which is nice. I'm going to cover them with this bowl. And then we're going to take this out. And we're going to pop in our sear plate. Okay, now there's a couple different ways that you can do uh, the meat with a thermometer. First off, let's say if you don't have the meat thermometer attachment built into your unit, you can just get your own meat thermometer and um, stick it in there and this through the door and that'll be just perfectly fine. But this unit has it. So I pop the plug into the side here. Okay, so there's two ways you can do this. You first off, you could set mode, you have to set mode. We're going to do sear crisp. And then you can go down to your smart cook system and select manual and select your 
Um, I did this wrong again. <clears throat> okay, the first thing that we need to do is we need to select the mode, sear crisp, and we want to set the temperature uh, to... And then we want to set the temperature to 425 degrees. I went the wrong direction. There we go. And then with the thermometer, you have one of two options. You have the manual to select that you want your meat to be whatever temperature you want for the um, doneness that you prefer. For the steak, I want medium rare, which is 130 degrees. Or you can choose the preset, and I'm going to choose beef at temperature doneness you select the doneness but button for medium rare it says medium rare there beef at 130 degrees then I'm gonna press start and it is preheating the sear plate once the preheat is done it will beep and I will put the meat onto this now remember for safety that that sear plate is very hot so you have to use your oven mitts that are rated at the proper temperature to pull that out and then we're going to put the meat on there it makes that sear plate really hot the heating elements get bright orange and that's going to be a nice good sear and sizzle to the meat when we drop it on there a few minutes into the cooking, we're going to pull it out and flip the steak so that you can get a good sear on both sides. Okay, the preheat is completed. We're now going to put the meat in there. I'm going to use my tongs to pull it out. Grab the meat. Oh, listen to that beautiful sizzle. Let the cord come out the top like that, and it is cooking away with a great sizzle sound. Now, of course, by cooking with the temperature control, you don't know how much longer you have, but you can see that currently the inside temperature of the meat is 56 and the target is 130 degrees that we want to get to. So you can tell, obviously, as the numbers get close to 130 that it's nearly done. Right now, it's still got a bit of chill from the refrigerator. I'm sure it will go up much faster as we start to get closer to the 130. Okay, it is almost done and it just smells so incredible. And I've been standing here watching and watching the sizzles, it just looks so great. How easy and fast is that? Look at how beautiful that is. That's just an incredible looking steak. We're going to let this rest a few minutes. You never want to uh, cut into it too quickly. It continues to cook for a few minutes. I want to take this thermometer out. All right, I'm going to prepare the potatoes. We'll take a look at those and then cut into this meat. Look at that potato. Just perfect, tender inside. You gotta crack it open there, fluff it a little bit, add your toppings, and you've got a great meal. Along with that beautiful steak, yum.
All right, let's cut this and show you the tenderness inside, the doneness inside. Oh, that is perfect. Just perfect. Wow. My wife and I are going to share this and enjoy a great steak and potatoes. Baked potatoes at that. Very successful. I wasn't sure if it would be because of the height. Was concerned that uh, the top edges of the potato would dry out and get a little burned. Um, but that didn't happen. They were fluffy and light and fully baked. It was wonderful. And, uh, and so the advantage of cooking baked potatoes in the, the Ninja Foodi flip oven, smart oven, dual heat, the advantage of it is that you're not wasting all that energy in heating a full size oven. To keep that full oven, it takes a while to preheat, it takes a lot more energy, to, I would imagine, a lot more energy to keep that oven at full heat as opposed to the little space in this oven. Preheats quicker and, uh, and less space to keep heated. The steak was incredible, seared perfectly. The thermometer got it just right on the doneness and uh, it was a good, good dinner. Now, uh, the advantage of doing the steak in the foodie as opposed to a uh, you know, fry pan or grill plate uh, is the temptation that we have to always take our spatula or tongs and press the meat. Um, I don't know why we do that, but you're not supposed to. You're supposed to let the juices stay in there and sear it. That's the whole point of the searing process is to seal in all that. So when we press it, we, uh, we extract juices unnecessarily. Because it's in the oven, you're not tempted to do that. It just, it's just in there and it cooks beautifully. It was, it was an easy, easy process. You saw, I mean, obviously potatoes take a little while to cook, but really the meal was done in short order and, uh, and it was a good dinner. Add a little bit of green salad and you've got a nice family meal. So I hope you like that. Please like and subscribe if you did, if you're not subscribed already. And just a reminder to those of you that are just catching or only watching the Ninja Foodie videos, I do so much other content around Disney, art, life, vlogging, and I would really love for you to check out all my other videos as well. Don't just find me for the, for the cooking and the, the Ninja. There's a lot of other stuff that we do, and so I'd hope that you'll track with us on that. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye.